What up everyone, welcome back to Blade Bias. If you know anything about me, you will know that I am not only a dirty comp sci major, but I'm also very interested in psychology and the inner workings of the human mind. In fact, I'm looking into possibly doing a minor in psychology. I know, weird, you work with computers all day and then you want to get a minor in how humans work, but it's actually a lot more useful than you might think to understand how the brain works and what's going on, especially in the realm of computers. For example, UI is almost entirely a psychological process. You need to know where the user is going to look, what the user wants to do, how the user is going to accomplish that task, and you need to design a user interface that is going to help them do that more efficiently. And to do it more efficiently, you have to know what they're going to be distracted by or where they're going to get lost. And that's where psychology comes in. But what's also interesting is that psychology can, uh, don't worry, this is not just one of my mindless rants. It has nothing to do with battle songs whatsoever. What's also interesting about psychology is you learn things in classes that you can apply to battle song flipping. And that is exactly what we're going to do today. Today we're going to talk about getting over the plateau, as they call it, the OK plateau. Whenever you learn a new skill, you have this immediate period where you get really good really fast and you, you experience this exponential curve of skill. But inevitably, everyone will hit a point where they hit the plateau, where you stop improving, you level out, and you just kind of stay the same. And people find it very difficult to break out of that plateau. In fact, I think it's one of the main reasons that people quit. They see it as, oh, I'm not making enough progress quick enough, so I'm going to stop flipping entirely because it's getting boring. And interestingly enough, I've learned, I have the article right here just so I can make sure that I, I have everything correct, that there are ways to break out of that plateau. Relatively simple ones too. So to do that, I'm going to have to do a little bit of a boring talk about the three stages of learning a new task, if you will allow me. In the first stage, also known as the cognitive phase, essentially what you do is you discover a new thing and you develop strategies to do that thing better. When you're flipping, you're, you're learning how to move your fingers so that you can catch things. You're learning how the ballast song arcs through the air. You're learning the basics, essentially. And then you move on to the next phase. When you have everything down, you move on to the intellectual phase, I believe it's called. Uh, give me, no, sorry, not the intellectual phase. The associative phase, where you're taking in everything that you learned in the basic phase, in the cognitive, in the cognitive phase, you take on all the basic stuff and you make it more efficient. And you get to the point where you're doing it faster and faster and you're making less mistakes. And then finally, the autonomous phase is where the plateau comes in. Because you get to a point where you're not thinking about what you're doing. You're just doing it automatically. And this is sort of a comfort zone for the human brain. We want to be okay at something. So when we practice, we don't practice things that we can't do. We practice things that we can do in an attempt to make them more consistent. Think, when you flip, you're mainly focusing on tricks that you already know. When I flip on blade bias, I'm doing the same loop like over and over again because it's automatic. I can talk while I can do it relatively easily. But that also means that you hit a plateau relatively easily because you stop internalizing new methods to get better and you just start practicing the things that you're good at because the brain wants to feel good at something, right? And that's, that's the plateau, essentially. You become autonomous and you stop trying to learn. And the ways to break out of that are not just simply... I mean, one of the ways to break out of it is simply just um, focus back on learning things. But there's, there's, there's a few more intricate steps that you can do to legitimately improve at, um, at something. So number one, you want to focus on things that you can't do rather than things that you can. I find a lot when I practice new tricks that my brain just like, I get back into that flow and I just automatically start flipping. Like I'll learn, let's say a chatter, and I'll get stuck right here. And then my brain will just go, okay, well, no, let's just do this. And then we go into that. And then we do this. We can do that. And we can do that. We can do this. And it just, okay. 
be a little nicer to yourself there, Tay Flipper. You're not trash. Um, but you, you're, you're autonomous. You just, you go back into the autonomous phase and you're like, well, I can't do that. So I'm going to do what I can do instead. Um, and so what you can do is really buckle down and say, okay, I am going to drill. I'm going to drill this and I'm not going to stop until I learn it. And I'm going to make sure that I don't get distracted on doing that. See, I <laughs> literally just did it live in front of you. You just, you really focus in on doing things that you, you can't do and you will eventually improve. Um, I found that that happening with this trick that I've been doing, this fan, and I've turned that into a full choker fan at this point. So that's, that's pretty cool. I thought I had completely plateaued, but nope, I'm still, still learning tricks. Now, thankfully, since that is a little like, uh, kind of obvious, there are other ways to improve, notably doing it faster. Now, similarly to the vein of learning something new and trying to focus on only doing things you can't do rather than things you can do, um, for example, pro musicians don't sit there playing music like amateur musicians do. They sit there doing drills and doing practices for specific techniques or figure skaters. These are the, uh, these are the, uh, the examples that they, they list in this article I'm looking at but they no less true. Um, figure skaters focus on the jumps that they aren't landing rather than the jumps that they are landing. Whereas less, um, I, I hate to say less skilled, but like, you know what I mean? Less accomplished, that also sounds weird. Less skilled um, figure skaters are only focusing on jumps they can do in an attempt to make them more consistent. So obviously, Focusing on things that you don't know is an obvious way to improve, but you can also, as I mentioned earlier, do speed. Um, there was a study on speed typing because typing is a huge plateau thing where you learn it really quickly and then you get to the point where you're like, okay at it. And then your brain just stops thinking about ways you can improve. You're like, I'm good enough. Uh, I'm not going to like for me, typing is like a one finger thing with both hands and I can do it fast enough that it works. And that I'll, that's, that's it. My brain doesn't care about getting better than that. And a way to break out of that is physically forcing yourself to type. There was a study done and they found that when participants physically force themselves to type 10 to 20% faster than they normally do, they showed greater signs of improvement and getting over that plateau phase. And I think the same thing can definitely be um, applied to flipping because when you flip fast, you make more mistakes. And if you are mindful of what that mistake was, you can learn from it. So if I flip really fast through my normal combo, I can see, oh, I missed the pinky catch. And I can adjust the next time I do the same thing and flip really fast, I can adjust and catch that thing. And flipping faster than you normally do is pretty uncomfortable because it makes you aware of things that you're not doing correctly. For example, my whip rollover right there is not very efficient. It doesn't look very good. So that's something that I need to work on. So it kind of tells you the areas that you need to work on. And if you keep flipping faster and faster, well, not faster and faster, but if you just keep flipping a little faster than you're used to, eventually you'll notice that you get way more consistent as you start to learn the things that you're getting wrong and what you need to fix. Now, obviously it's gonna be tough for me to show this while also talking. So allow me to not really show it off that much, but hopefully you get what I'm, what I'm saying. Um, let me just see, is that everything that I did? Uh, yeah, in other words, regular practice isn't enough. To improve, we have to be constantly pushing ourselves beyond where we think our limits lie and then pay attention to how and why we fail, which is basically entirely what I just said with the flipping thing. Because if your brain is comfortable with where you are in flipping, if your flipping gets the job done, it, will, it wants to stop. So you have to consciously push yourself further than that to force it to learn. And if anything else, hopefully just understanding what the plateau even is in the first place could help you get your own ideas on how to beat it. Think of the, com the, think of the plateau as a comfort zone of sorts. 
your brain doesn't want to be outside its comfort zone. You have to push yourself to be outside the comfort zone. And if you just stay in that comfort zone all the time, nothing's going to change. You're never going to do anything cool because outside of the comfort zone is new things. So in any way that you can push your brain outside of that comfort zone, when you're learning a trick, this is another great example. When I'm learning this, the, the chatter, if I just keep doing like stopping here and then going like I have been, I'm never going to learn. I'm just going to keep doing it that way because it works at the end of the day. But if I force myself to do it fast, I'll see where my shortcomings are. Like I know getting my third finger out of the way to let the rest of the ballast on come up is where I'm really struggling. But then there's that one time that you'll do it right and then you'll go, oh, that's how I do it. Holy cow. Like that was okay, I guess. So if you're learning a trick, especially, do it faster. Just force yourself to do it faster because it will really help you understand where your shortcomings are and what you need to fix. And as I said earlier, that can also apply to combos, but I think I have rambled on long enough. Hopefully you found this interesting. Hopefully you found this helpful. And I hope some of you get over the plateau that you've been facing because the plateau phase can be a long time. Another thing to keep in mind is that it's okay to plateau. Everyone, literally everyone plateaus, even the people who are the best in the world. Magnus Carlsen probably plateaued at chess at one point. It's just an inevitable part of the cycle. So keep pushing yourself past the, uh, past the comfort zone and uh, get over that plateau. And I'm going to try and put these into, if I actually have time to flip more often, I'm going to put some of these practices into... Uh, into use and we'll see how much better I get because I would like to be a little bit of a better flipper anyway hopefully this helped hopefully you all get over your plat your plateau don't get too discouraged it is a long process just keep at it you'll get there eventually and I will see you in the next one peace